Hi everyone, my name is Valerie and I am the Outreach and Engagement Coordinator for Future Energy Systems. Welcome to Energy Talks Online, which as the name suggests is a lecture series all about energy. Future Energy Systems is a research program from the University of Alberta launched in 2016. It's funded by the Government of Canada's Canada First Research Excellence Fund. At Future Energy Systems, we focus on multidisciplinary research that develops energy technologies of the near future, integrates them into the current infrastructure, and examines possible consequences for the environment, economy, and society. We also contribute to the development of solutions to challenges presented by current energy systems. At Future Energy Systems, we have more than 100 research projects, over 130 researchers, and over 600 graduate students, postdoctoral fellows, and highly qualified personnel. Tonight, we're going to hear from one of them. If you're watching this premiere live, you can put your questions in the chat box below. Thanks so much for joining us for Energy Talks, and enjoy! Bye! Hello everyone, thanks for coming, and uh, thanks for your interest in this topic which is uh, the current from wall to harmony. This is about power electronic enabled revolution in electric grid. Firstly, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Hao Tian. I received a PhD degree in energy system from University of Alberta in 2019. And I'm now working as a postdoc research fellow at the University of Alberta since then. And my research area is energy system. The presentation includes the following four parts. In part one, I will talk about the history of the electric grid. And in part two and part three, I will talk about power electronics and uh, its impact on the grid structure. And in part four, I will introduce some research performed in our uh, research lab. Firstly, I will talk about what of the currents and the era of alternating currents. The history of utilizing electricity starts from Michael Faraday discovers the law of electromagnetic induction, which is also known as Faraday's law. According to Faraday's discovery, when a conductor is moving inside of a magnetic field, a current will be generated and flow inside of the conductor. Based on this theory, Pixie made a direct current generator prototype after making some efforts to eliminate the alternating currents because at that time, alternating currents are considered to be useless. In 1966, Siemens and the engineers in Siemens company invented a very powerful and useful DC generator. And meanwhile, people had discovered that alternating current is also useful. So Lord Kelvin and Ferranti was able to invent a very powerful AC generator in 1882. So which one is better, DC or AC? This answer was DC at the beginning because DC is easier to control. It only has amplitude. And uh, at that time, DC motors are also well developed, so it's very easy to use. On the other hand, the alternating current has a lot of variables to be controlled, like the frequency, the phase angle, the amplitude. So due to the complexity, engineers was not very good at control its output. So the, the AC generator is hard to control. And at that time, there's no efficient AC motor. So in the beginning, almost all the electricity devices are based on DC. But the people have found the potential of AC. A lot of talented engineers uh, try to improve AC system and make it usable. Uh, some of them made really great efforts and uh, Frianti was able to invent an early transformer to change the voltage of AC. And uh, Lucien Gollard developed the first AC system in Italy. And Stanley, uh, Tesla and Westinghouse, they are trying to develop AC system in US. The development of the AC technology gets people to really think about which one is better. Uh, actually, DC system has some limitation. For example, there is no efficient way to step up or step down the DC voltage at that time. 
This means the transmission system had to use a low voltage to keep the system efficient. The transmission line had to, to be limited to a small range, for example, one kilometer. In this case, the grid can only be small scale elect electricity system. It will be very costly because if we want to cover a large area, we have to build a lot of power plants. But the AC system has the transformer to easily step up and step down the voltage. So it's, it's possible to use a high voltage on the transmission line, which enables the long range AC power transmission. So in this case, the grid can be a large scale system. So uh, since the in the 20th century, the AC grid has, to, has dominated the market and chosen by the people. Here I want to talk a little bit about the AC uh, voltage step up and step down. Uh, like, like I said, the major difference at that time was like uh, AC can be uh, easily step up and step down and enable the possibility of high efficiency uh, long range trans transmission. Uh, this is made by uh, the transformer. A modern transformer it looks like the picture at the left hand side and uh, it can be equivalent to the uh, circuit at the right hand side. And it can be seen that if we want to change the voltage, we only need to turn, change the turn ratio. If we have a like, larger uh, turn ratio at the secondary side, uh, our uh, voltage will be changed. So uh, in this case, we can easily step up and step down the voltage. The electric grid today is showing this figure. As you can see from this figure, the power plant first can uh, generate electricity, which it will be step up to a high voltage for transmission. So during the transmission system, uh, the power will be transferred with high voltage, low current. So the low current will help reduce the power loss on the transmission line and uh, obtain higher efficiency. But at the distribution system, the voltage will be stepped down to a lower voltage so that uh, it will be safer for the customers. And uh, it was noting that uh, the electricity is uh, hard to store, so uh, the power plant has changed to its output to meet the requirement of the customers. And, and the power flow is always flow from the power plant to the customers. Uh, at least for now, it's, uh, it's like this way. The war of currency is concluded uh, with the winning of AC system, but actually this uh, is not the final answer because new technologies are developed. So uh, we'll check about the new technology, which power electronics uh, and uh, what it can do to uh, reform our modern grid structure. AC won the war of the currents, but it doesn't mean that DC system will be uh, will disappear. Uh, actually, the DC components, uh, more and more DC components are, de are being developed. Uh, for example, the energy storage components, such as batteries, are DC, and it has lasted for a very long time. And the solar panels developed in 1954, and they are actually DC source. And the electronic the industry have developed lots of DC systems, uh, like the computers, uh, telephones, they are actually DC loads, but we have to convert the AC to DC to meet the need of the, this uh, electronic device. And wind turbine generation, it is AC system, but uh, the, due to the change of the wind speed, its frequency is changing. It's not like fixed frequency like our electricity grid. To make sure the Wind, gen, uh, wind turbine generation system can be connected to the grid, we have to use DC to buffer the change. So we firstly convert the variable frequency input to DC and then convert it back to uh, AC with a fix, uh, fixed frequency. So in this case, we have to uh, use some technology to convert the power and making sure the coexistence of DC and AC components. The technology to 
to convert power between a DC and AC is called uh, power electronics technology. Uh, it based on three technologies. Uh, firstly, it's like power semiconductors. Uh, it's like a semiconductor, but it's like a high power. So uh, we can use it in like high voltage up to uh, 6.5 kV and uh, several thousand amps. And we also need a uh, power converter circuit. This circuit makes sure it is possible to convert the power between DC and AC. And in this case, we also need uh, some control system to ensure the power conversion is uh, performed as we expected. And uh, not only uh, the power conversion between DC and AC can be made, we can also change power between DC and DC or AC and AC. So uh, in this case, uh, it is possible to change the voltage of DC system. We can step up or step down the DC voltage with uh, uh, high efficiency. And uh, in this case, we can uh, convert DC and AC power into the form we desire. It's very flexible. Power electronic technologies has been widely applied. Actually, the power electronic devices are all around us. Uh, for example, the wired or wireless charging circuits inside of your cell phone or and your cell phone charger and uh, your power supply in your desktop, like a uh, variable frequency fridge and uh, air conditioner, only our uh, variable frequency ones. And also the electric vehicle are all based on the power electronic technologies. Power electronics is also important in industry. For example, the solar generation system requires uh, power electronics converters to convert the DC solar energy into AC to feed the grid. And uh, the wind turbine generation, like I said, we need to convert the variable AC into DC and back to AC uh, and then change the frequency to be fixed. And uh, also the variable speed pump needs uh, AC DC and AC converter and uh, the conveyor and the electric shapes also requires the power conversions. So uh, it's very important in industry. And more importantly, the power electronics can help address the challenges in modern AC grid. Modern electric grid faces some challenges and uh, power electronics provide some solution to well address these challenges. So in the following parts, I will talk about the challenges in modern grid and the solutions provided by power electronics. First, I will talk about greenhouse gas emission and the, the increasing demands. And uh, let's see how power electronics will help solve these problems. Uh, nowadays, human beings are facing a very big challenge, which is uh, global warming. Uh, we have seen evidences showing that in the last 50 years, the temperature uh, has rise by 4 degrees averagely. Uh, this means majorly caused by the greenhouse gas emission uh, because our energy majorly comes from the fossil fuel and it contributes a very large portion, more than 50% in the uh, energy sectors. And, uh, so if we want to reduce the uh, gas emission and uh, like de accelerate the global warming, we need to use more renewable energy. Uh, in this case, we do, uh, we do need power conversion technologies. On the other hand, the demand on energy is still increasing. Um, it is predicted that uh, in the 30 years, the, the trend will not be changed. We, we still need more and more energy. And uh, but it's uh, uh, predicted that uh, the renewables and natural gases will uh, contribute more in the energy sector, and uh, which means the less usage of coal, and uh, which is good because this can reduce the, the coal uh, emission and uh, pollution. Uh, at the same time, the aging grid is require some upgrades. Some of the instruments 
our devices on the, uh, in the grid are pretty old. Most of them, like uh, uh, transformers and uh, transmission lines, are more than 20 years old. And uh, so uh, to to address the increasing energy demand, the uh, grid has to be upgraded. The above mentioned two challenges can be well addressed by power electronic technologies. Like I pointed out, the renewable energy generation is enabled by the power electronic technology. And these uh, such kind of projects are being built all over the world, including Canada. Uh, like in this figure, we can see a lot of projects are being built or uh, already built. And uh, so this, uh, we will see renewable energy generation will contribute more in our energy sector and uh, will help reduce the greenhouse gas emission and the pollution caused by the con conventional fossil fuels. Here I want to talk a little bit more about solar generation in Alberta. Uh, actually, Alberta is rich in uh, solar energy, uh, like shown in this figure. We are in the richest area, uh, but uh, actually we don't have a lot of projects uh, in Alberta. Most of them are under development. But even count this, uh, all these projects, the number is not large enough. Uh, actually, in Alberta, you have very good opportunity to invest on solar generation uh, because you can get your money back by cutting your energy bill. Um, probably you can get all your money back in 10 years. So that's a very good investment and you can contribute to reduce the greenhouse uh, gas emission. And uh, with this technology, you need uh, PV panels and uh, converters, uh, which is power electronics converters. Uh, also, power electronic technology is also important in wind turbine generation, uh, generation system. Uh, as I pointed out in the previous slides, uh, the wind turbine generation requires AC-DC and DC-AC conversion because the wind turbine has a variable frequency and uh, the grid has fixed frequency. To make sure the power can be properly injected to the grid, we have to convert it to DC first and then back to AC. In this case, we can uh, change the and uh, power into the form we desired. Power electronic technology also helps upgrade the electricity grid nowadays. Uh, to meet the increasing demands, we may build large uh, power plants, but maybe the, the power plant is far from the city. For example, if we build uh, a hydro power plant, uh, generally these large rivers are, are far from the uh, uh, the city. So uh, in this case, we probably need to transfer bulky power uh, to the city and which is very, very far away. And uh, if we have very long transmission line, the DC system can be more cost effective because the uh, DC system only requires one conductor or two conductor to transfer power. But the AC system requires three conductor. So for long uh, transmission line, uh, the DC, uh, DC transmission system can save cost online. This can offset the cost on the expensive converters. So the overall system can be more cost effective. Uh, another way to solve the increasing demands is to use energy storage uh, equipment to, to help shave the load peak. Uh, here, uh, I show a typical residual load profile uh, in one day. As we can see here, uh, actually in the daytime, our, uh, our demand on electricity is, is low, but during uh, the, the night, uh, when we go back home and maybe watch TV and cooking, and our uh, consume uh, demand on electricity will increase very high. And the problem is the, the power system has to design its capacity uh, to meet the peak of the, uh, uh, the peak demand. So this actually wastes a lot of uh, cost and investment. 
uh, on to meet the requirement for just a few hours. But uh, we can, if we have uh, energy storage components, actually we can shave the peak because like the power don't, do not need to be transferred from the grid. Uh, it can be uh, fulfilled by the local energy storage. So the batteries can uh, inject power to the grid and consumed by the customer. So, it, so the transformer or the transmission line do not need to be designed based on the peak load. And uh, in this procedure, we, we need to connect the DC battery to the AC system. So power electronic technology is also needed here. Uh, besides the above mentioned challenges, the, our electricity system also uh, face some other challenges like power quality issues. Uh, one of the power quality issues is the harmonics. The harmonics are harmful because they can uh, cause extra loss and interfere the operation of some instruments. And uh, we have a lot of harmonic cells around us in our daily life. For example, the fluorescent light. Uh, the waveform in our grid is expected to be sinusoidal, like the waveform here, but the light uh, will uh, cause the current to be distorted, like uh, some distortion can be found in this uh, sinusoidal light uh, waveforms. To cancel these harmonics, we can use uh, active power filter, which is a power electronics converter to inject distorted current with the opposite phase. So we actually cancel these harmonics and make sure the, the grid current to be sinusoidal. Another power quality issue is the unbalanced voltage. Uh, like I pointed out, the transmission and distribution grid are in three phases. Uh, which are uh, phase A and B and C. And uh, uh, basically they are on different transmission lines. Uh, so we ha actually have three, uh, three lines to transfer power. And uh, but the household loads are generally single phase. So generally the, the household loads are connected to, the, to one phase and uh, are organized uh, to the different phases to make sure the loads are generally the same, but uh, in practice, it's hard to make sure that the three phase loads are always balanced. Uh, there will always be some phase that has higher loads and uh, means higher current and lower voltage. And uh, if this is a long-term problem, it will uh, impact the equipment, uh, including the transmission system and the distribution system transformers. And uh, this side effect has to be uh, compensated. And the one solution is to use power converter and connect to the different phases, uh, transferring the power between phases. And also, uh, we can also uh, inject the, some reactive power to change the voltage uh, of some specific phase to its normal value. So uh, the unbalanced problem can be uh, solved. Also, power electronic technologies can also help to uh, achieve low-cost electricity delivery to remote areas. Canada has a lot of remote communities. Uh, it is said that there are 300, 300 remote communities and lots of people live there. Uh, these communities are far from the city and the, the grid, so it has relies on themselves to generate power. Uh, as shown in this map, most of them relies on the diesel power generation. And this will cause a lot of coal emission. And, uh, and due to the high price of diesel transportation and the storage, the electricity price are 10 times higher than the price in places which are connected to the grid. To reduce the dependence on diesel in remote communities and cut price, uh, power electronic technologies provide some solutions such as integrate uh, renewable energy, such as uh, solar generation, 
and it, we can also install uh, energy storage system to help uh, optimize the, the load. And uh, in this case, we formed a microgrid. A microgrid is a small scale grid which also contains the uh, energy sources, loads, and distribution lines. But all of these are organized locally with light dependence on the grid. Uh, actually, microgrid can be completely isolated from the grid, like in the uh, remote area, but it can also be used in grid-connected systems. In both situations, microgrid can be a good option to provide reliable and green electricity to the users because microgrid can employ various energy sources such as wind turbines, uh, AC generators, uh, energy storage components, uh, solar panels, and uh, both DC and AC loads can be fed by the uh, microgrid reliably. So uh, microgrid is a very good option to uh, increase the reliability. Uh, now we can conclude the benefits brought by power electronics. Uh, because of power electronics uh, are very good at uh, energy conversion or power conversion, uh, it is possible to connect DC sources, DC load, or even DC transmission system to the uh, uh, AC system. This makes it possible to have coexisting uh, AC and DC. And, uh, with these power electronic technologies, uh, some of the challenges in the modern AC grid can be addressed. And more importantly, the wide application of power electronics can help improve the ele electricity grid structure in the future. So in the final part, I will briefly talk about the uh, uh, power electronic enabled future grid structure. Generally speaking, the future grid will have both DC and AC integrated. If Edison knows about power electronic technology, the war of the currents will never happen because uh, actually DC and AC can be both uh, connected to the system, to the same system, and uh, all of us can enjoy the advantages of both AC and DC. And uh, so in the future grid, the system will be hybrid AC and DC and in both transmission and distribution system. This brings us some advantages like high reliability because all the power are del delivered by two different systems. If one system got failure, the other system can still deliver, uh, deliver the power to your home and you can still use the electricity. And also it can increase the uh, efficiency because uh, lots of conversions between AC and DC can be avoided. When you use a DC device, you can directly connect to the DC grid. When you use the AC device, you can directly connect to the AC device, uh, AC grid. And also, uh, due to the usage of power electronic devices, uh, the grid can enjoy high power quality because harmonics and uh, unbalance in AC system can be well addressed. And uh, also, uh, we can have low carbon emission because we have a lot of renewable energy integrated in the grid. Here we have an uh, example system for the future grid structures. As we can see here, we have a utility grid and we transfer the power through uh, high voltage AC and uh, high voltage DC. Uh, both of them can transfer high power in the transmission system. Uh, within the distribution system, we also have a medium voltage AC distribution system and the medium voltage DC distribution system. And all of them are connected by the interlinking converter which converts AC and DC power. And inside your home in the low voltage, uh, we also have low voltage AC and low voltage DC devices. Uh, if you have AC loads, you can directly connect to the system and you can also connect to this DC device such as uh, energy storage batteries and data center or PV panels into the low voltage DC system. So all of these devices 
can enjoy high efficiency without like multiple power conversions. And uh, you can also exchange power between these two systems through these converters. This concludes our presentation today. Uh, the major point is how electronic technology makes it possible to have both DC and AC in our electricity grid. And this will be the trend and the future. And uh, after the presentation, I would like to uh, share some information about our uh, research group. Uh, our research group is called Electronic and Intelligent Grade Research Lab. Uh, in short, it is called Elite Grade Research Lab. And our lab head is uh, Yun Weibi, professor uh, of University of Alberta. Uh, Dr. Lee is the director of our uh, research lab and uh, one of the pioneers on modern power electronic technologies in microgrid applications. And our research group right now has six postdoc research fellows. Uh, I'm one of them and eight PhD students, uh, four master students. Uh, we have uh, seven patents and uh, 250 publications and 50 industrial reports, uh, we are actually very productive. Right now, we are building a facility for microgrid technology, and uh, we all focus on microgrid and smart grid, uh, which are uh, the, the future of the electricity grid. Uh, like I said, it will be hybrid ACDC grid, and uh, but with uh, a lot of smart control. Uh, so we will build a, a like prototype system for the future great and uh, also we have built some uh, converters uh, which is very close to commercial products and we are also seeking the opportunity to uh, to work with like uh, uh, people from industry to uh, make some products and make it commercialized. Uh, that's all. Uh, thanks for your attention. Thank you so much for watching Future Energy Systems video. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of our exciting content. Check out the links below to our website and learning page where you can find activities, learning extension, and more. You can also sign up on the website for notifications for future videos and interactive opportunities. There's so much to learn as we explore our energy future.